You know, like everyone else, I've become an armchair expert over the last couple of weeks, Lucy, but you're the real expert and that's why we're talking to you this morning. So, look, we've spoken last week about the dynamism of the Matildas game, how differently they played against uh, France to so some of their previous games. How do they need to play against the Lionesses? Well, they're a similar opponent uh, to what we've seen already and what we've faced already, Laura, uh, in that uh, when we had to play against Denmark, we expected them to have the majority of the ball and we expected us to rely again on our strengths. As I said before, in transition and on the counter-attack, I'm expecting again that that's the type of opponent that we will be facing in England. As I said earlier, very dominant in possession, very, very strong going forward, particularly in the final third. So I'm expecting that they will have a lot of the ball. But again, it's about the Matildas playing to their strengths time and time again against Nigeria and I always go back to that game I felt that we didn't play to our strengths we tried to outclass them in areas where we weren't simply strong enough or dominant enough mm. and I feel that now those issues have been corrected we saw against France again that was a massive arm wrestle it had to go to us you know recording the most historic penalty shootout in women's world cup history <laughs> for us to win the match but ultimately, they're very similar opponents. They've got a lot of strength in attack and we're going to see a real arm wrestle in the midfield. But also for them, they're going to have to have a, a real, you know, a real battle breaking the Matildas down, us very strong defensively. But equally for them, they too, as I said before, very strong in defence, have only conceded three goals. Mm. There are some similarities in the two teams in that we've both had to go to extra time and penalties. England had to do the same against Nigeria, but defeated them far more comfortably than what the Matildas defeated France. Mm. Um, but they've also equally been just as frugal in uh, their changes and their substitutions as well. We've got some tired bodies out there. The Matildas, as we heard Alicia Ferguson saying earlier, said that predominantly it's been about rest. And we have had to rest our players because we've only managed to really use about 17 players throughout the tournament so far. No player has covered more distance at this Women's World Cup than our very own Katrina Gorry, who's just yeah, been wow. outstanding, simply outstanding <laughs> in the so midfield good. for us. But so was Mary Fowler. I mean, this is a player that we're seeing at just 20 years old, has so many more opportunities to grow. Give her another five or so years when she really hits her peak and we're going to see a truly frightening player as if we aren't already. Caitlin yeah. Ford has been immense for us. This has been, I know I've been saying this throughout the entire tournament, this is her best best Women's World Cup showing and her best performances in a green and gold jersey for this country. Mackenzie Arnold, we know people were putting up memes likening her to a brick wall that when you <laughs> Google it, Mackenzie's face comes up. You know, she has just been fantastic and so mm. have so many of these players. Uh, you know, and I, and I mentioned Claire Hunt before. She's been outstanding in defence, a quiet, resolute player who goes about her business and has been so solid for us at the back. Mm. We'll need to see more of these showings uh, in this particular match but as I said some tired bodies so does Gustafsson make some more changes yeah. it's unlikely he will Sam Kerr the big question mark over her does she yeah, start so Lucy talk to us about Sam Kerr what happens here Sam Kerr well, what happens here, I think she may again feature off the bench. She's not completely match fit, and that's to be expected. She hasn't featured as much throughout this tournament. I mean, Why we saw her say that? Much. Why? I mean, I, I believe you, and I'm on board with you, and she's not playing the, the full uh, 90 minutes, but she looks damn good when she's on the pitch. <laughs> She looked fantastic, didn't she? And against France, when she came on inside 30 seconds, Laura, she already made an impact, making a deadly run forward. And she was already involved from the outset once yeah. she made an appearance off the bench in so many more crucial plays, flicking the ball on and, and really yeah. getting involved and, and providing that extra bit of spark that the Matildas need going forward. But I feel that Caitlin Ford has very much filled those shoes in terms of the, the role of her stepping up and creating as many opportunities down the left wing. I expect she'll start off the bench only because I think Gustafsson is largely very satisfied with how things are going and let's not forget Sam is still recovering from this injury so she's not 100% match fit she's not 100% match sharp mm. that's to be expected I mean for a global player though her status is just incredible and I think that any time that she's involved in any of the Matilda's actions is, yeah. is going to be immense um, but I think uh, as an impact player at this point if we choose to bring her on early uh, in the second half I think okay. that that may work to our benefit and as I said before, we've got a lot of tired bodies out there. So to bring someone on in a Sam who will still be quite fresh, but as I said, not 100% match fit, she'll still be able to provide that spark and that mm. extra engine that we'll need going forward to break down England in transition. Lucy, pleasure to talk to you as always. Fingers crossed and the nation is behind them, absolutely.